Good day. On this National Indigenous Peoples Day across Canada, the Diocese of Caledonia ministers on and with 10 First Nations, the Haida, Shimshan, Niska, Haisla, Gitsan, Wasetowitan, Delkane, Sakani, Cree, and Dunisha, along with the Metis, a privilege we gratefully acknowledge. And on this day, we pause and pray. We pray for right relationships and reconciliation and for a deeper understanding and appreciation of all people. I'm David Lehman, Bishop of Caledonia, so I invite you to pause with us today to sing some hymns, to pray some prayers, and to reflect with the Reverend Dr. Ray Aldred from the Vancouver School of Theology on the text today. So please, come in and join us. We begin by singing, Holy, Holy, Holy. May we pray. Creator, we give you thanks for all you are and all you bring to us for your visit within creation. In Jesus, you place the gospel in the center of the sacred circle through which all creation is related. You show us the way to live a generous and compassionate life. Give us strength to live together with respect and commitment as we grow in your spirit, for you are God now and forever. Amen. Creator God, from every family in heaven and earth takes its name. You have rooted and grounded us in your covenant love and empowered us by your spirit to speak truth in love and to walk in your way towards justice and wholeness. Mercifully grant that your people, journeying together in partnership, may be strengthened and guided to help one another to grow into the full stature of Christ who is our light and our life. Amen. John wrote his account of the Gospels so that we may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, 
the Christ, the Son of God, and that through believing we may have life in his name. John begins with a summary of the faith. The Lord be with you, and also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave the power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or the will of the flesh or of the will of man, but of God. And the Word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen His glory, the glory as of a Father's only Son, full of grace and truth. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Hi, my name is Ray Aldred. I'm the director of the Indigenous Studies Program at the Vancouver School of Theology. I'm sitting in my office. And my office sits upon the ancestral, traditional, unceded territory of the Musqueam people, the Squamish people, in the Tsleil-Waututh. I'm a guest here. I'm originally from, I grew up around Grand Prairie, Alberta. My mother was born on the territory of the Swan River Band up by Lesser Slave Lake in northern Alberta. My wife and I are living in Richmond, British Columbia. I'm trying to live in a good way upon this territory where the Creator has brought us to. And I thank you for the opportunity to share this reflection with you. The bishop asked if I would record record a sermon and I'm happy to do so. This sermon or reflection is happening close to June 21st, National Indigenous Peoples Day in Canada. June 21st was supposed to be a recognition of indigenous peoples in Canada. Reading from the Government of Canada's website, June 21st is National Indigenous Peoples Day. This is a day for all Canadians to recognize and celebrate the unique heritage, diverse culture, and outstanding contribution of First Nations, Inuit, and Métis people. The Canadian Constitution recognizes these three groups as Aboriginal people, also known as Indigenous people. National Aboriginal Day, now Indigenous Peoples Day, was announced in 1996. And through the proclamation declaring June 21st of each day as National Aboriginal Day. 1982, the National Indigenous Brotherhood, now the Assembly of First Nations, called for the creation of this day. In 1995, the Sacred Assembly, which I was, I was at, 
I went to the sacred assembly. I was there. And the sacred assembly called for indigenous and non-indigenous people. For a national holiday to celebrate the contributions of indigenous people. In 1995, also the Royal Commission on Indigenous People rec recommended the in designation of a National First Peoples Day. And so it was created. And on Ju June 21st, 2017, the name was changed to National Indigenous Day. All of these efforts we're an attempt to try to shift, I think, the narrative that Canada had used about Indigenous people. Canada's narrative about Indigenous people tended to paint us as a problem to be solved. And I think that the creation of National Indigenous Peoples Day was an attempt to try to shift the narrative, to help Canadians understand that Canada exists because of the goodwill of Indigenous people, because our ancestors made treaty to try to live together in the land as relatives. Indigenous people have done their part and continue to do their part to call Canada to live in an honorable way in the land, to pursue reconciliation as an attempt to heal and restore the harmony that we see all around us in the good world where we find ourselves. I say the good world because the Cree way of looking at all things begins with the understanding that it's a good world. It's a good world. This expression, however, raises questions for people, especially during this time. Someone struggling with mental illness might question whether or not it was really a good world. If we look at the world that we've been traveling for, through for the last couple years, we may question whether it's a good world. We've just started coming out of the pandemic, the pandemic which revealed our frailty as human beings. And people questioned if it was a good world. The finding of unmarked graves at former Indian residential schools has wiped away much of the peacekeeper myth that Canada had clung to. We are remembering National Indigenous Day this week but the unmarked graves reveal the generational trauma that has existed among indigenous people. The unmarked graves seem to wake up many non-indigenous people for a minute. And in light of this, many ask, how is it a good world? The wars and rumors of wars continue. Afghanistan is once more under the domination of the Taliban. Russian, Russia continues to occupy parts of the Ukraine and attack to try to occupy even more parts. In all of these things, we wonder, can we still wake up in the morning and say, it's a good world. I think that if we're willing to be taught by an indigenous way of looking at things, we can still see the hope that every day brings in a world and upon the land where we find ourselves. A hope founded not in some new technique or technology, a hope that does not rest within some new political organization or structure, is it, a, it is a hope that springs from the creator of a good world who continues to create and recreate 
even in the midst of difficult things. My reflection on the passages of Scripture that we've read today is all about a good creator of a good world leading to renewal. In a passage we read from the Hebrew Scripture, Isaiah 45, 25 to 31, I like the first verses particularly. To whom then will we compare, will you compare me, that I should be like him, says the Holy One. Lift up your eyes on high and see who created these. The Hebrew scripture reading from the prophet Isaiah answers through prophetic poetry that question of that day and the question the world has today, which God is the true God? The answer for Israel and for the indigenous nations has always been the true God is the God who made everything. The God who made everything is the one who sustains all of creation. When early missionaries came to Canada, they wrote that indigenous people that they encountered were not idolatrous. This was a surprise to the missionaries. Idolatrous was a term that the missionaries, Western missionaries used to apply to all kinds of people. But when they came to North America, they said the indigenous people there, they recognized that there's just one God Indigenous people understood that Creator had put us into land, and it's a good land. We see the Creator, the the great mystery, has given us our Mother, the Earth, to care for us. We belong to the land. Grand Chief of Treaty 8 told me, when talking about how the West was always trying to own the land, he said, you can only possess what you can carry on your back. That is why we cannot own the land. The world belongs to the Creator. If you would observe creation, Isaiah points out, you would understand the harmony that the Creator has put into creation. The Creator has created a world that cares for us, but it is always the Creator that is sustaining the good world. The good world reminds us that there is a good creator, a great mystery. Catholic priest Roger Vandersteen, who ministered in Wabaska, near where my great-grandfather was from, pointed out that for the Cree, they understood that it was their world, and it was a good world where the creator had put them. Consequently, he writes, they don't ask if something was good or bad. Rather, they just lived because it was their world. What I take that to mean is that we understand that we are connected to all things, and the Creator has ordered all things for life. It is a good world provided by a good Creator. When difficult things happen, you work through them because the Creator who made everything gives the wisdom to work through them. Isaiah points out that the God who made everything is the true God, the one can under, and one can understand this if they look at creation. Indigenous people observed the glory of God and began each day with thanksgiving. It's a good world and we give thanks. Sort of like Origen wrote, that if you look at creation, you can see the glory of God. Indigenous people could see the glory of the Creator in creation. That they let, yet they understand that difficult things do come. And our next passage gives us understanding of how we live in a world where thing, when things go wrong, even in a good world. And if we believe and the good creator and we trust in the good creator who made a good creation the passage in isaiah says we will be renewed and mount up with wings like eagles when the europeans came to canada 
Our next passage, Psalm 19, talks about a law flowing from creation. When the Europeans came to Canada, they had a serious superiority complex. Not everyone, but philosophically, Europe and its kingdoms believed that because they were Christian or because they had a superior mind, they were destined to rule the world. The papal bulls, which amount to the doctrine of discovery, made this plain. There were philosophers like John Locke or Thomas Hobbes, for example, who in their mind, the state of nature was wild and needed to be tamed. It was concluded by European nations that indigenous people were needing to be civilized and taught the law because they had none. This was a basic tenet of Europeans as they were spreading their civilization. They believed that where they were going, the people there were uncivilized and in need of training and in need of law. Primitive people, who they refer, in which is how they referred to indigenous people, were con con they were considered by the Europeans to have no law, no courts. This would lead Anglican missionary John West, first missionary in Western Canada, to state that the job of the missionary was to cultivate the wild lands by converting the wild people or heathen. John A. Macdonald believed that the problem with indigenous people was a moral problem. There, there it is again, that idea that morally Europeans were superior and so needed to, this, they needed to improve indigenous people. This was the thinking behind the residential school to provide moral training. All of this flowed out of the idea that indigenous people had no law. Indigenous people, however, would resonate with the psalmist in Psalm 19, that when you look at creation, you see the glory of God. Creation itself speaks or proclaims the glory of God, and it does it without a human voice. And creation, if you observe it, reminds us that we are in need of a law, the law of the Creator that He has given to us. Indigenous elders have taught me a couple of things that I see reflected in Psalm 19. First, that indigenous law flows from creation. One elder told me that he understood that their law came from the Creator through creation. John Boros, an expert on indigenous law, and Canadian law points out that indigenous law flows from creation stories. The creation stories teach us the importance of harmony, but we are human and we need to learn how to live in harmony. The psalmist points out the law can keep our way pure. Indigenous people taught me that whereas the animals all know how to live by instinct, the responsibility of human beings, because we have the gift of freedom, we must learn how to live in harmony. Learning how to live in harmony comes from observing creation and the law that flows from creation, that is holding creation together. Indigenous law teaches us that we must live in good relationship with all things. This is what we see in our good world that is all around us. We, how, we however, are small and so Creator has given us ceremony to help us understand and have strength to live out this harmony. We are rebuilding our ceremonial world, and that is the quest or task or journey of reconciliation. It flows from indigenous law that we see flowing from creation, but we understand that it is fulfilled in Jesus Christ that in Jesus Christ, creator and creation come into perfect harmony. And that Jesus Christ is not only the mediator between human beings and the creator, but also between human beings and creation and human beings and one another. I want to turn now to the passage in Philippians, which talks about 
rejoicing and thinking about good things. And I've come to learn from indigenous people, from my indigenous people, that the best way to do that is to head out on the land and remember it's a good world. The epistle commands us to rejoice and, I th and think about good things. And as I read it, I was struck by the last part to practice these things. You see, the land will heal us. It's a good land. And we need to get out there and feel the earth welcome us. To remember that we are created by the one who cares about us. And it's a good world. At the heart of Cree spirituality in Treaty 8 is in the fall we pray for good hunting and in the spring you give thanks for good hunting. People always ask, how do you know it was good hunting? Well, I always think where I grew up, on the day that I was born it was minus 40 degrees and if you're still alive in the spring it was good hunting. It's a good world and sometimes we get caught in thinking that once we take care of that difficulty or once we take care of this other difficulty, then maybe our life will really start. But the life we are living in the land is the one that we have. Life is a gift. And we're always pushing to live out the harmony that exists in creation all around us and that we want to see between us and all of our relatives. The Cree understood this reality. A Nishnabi teaching principle is to, in the midst of difficulties, to pile the good on the bad until something good comes up as a solution. When you face the challenges in life, you need to remember that it's a good world. You need to get out on the land and remember those things. The gospel passage today was from John 1, 1 to 18. John 1, 1 to 18 contains sort of the, the seeds of everything John will develop in the rest of his gospel. But I want to think about a couple things. The most complete revelation of God is the person of Jesus Christ. It is the word that has gone out from the creator that fills the earth and has made all things in this world, word continues to echo with true spirituality or power, not mere human words, but the word of God fills the earth and makes up the law that has gone out from the creator, as Psalm 19 says. The word that has come to recreate is the word that created all things. The word that has come to take in our brokenness and begin to adopt, adopt us and take in the whole world and overcome the darkness that has blinded people. The gospel tells us the word is a light that shines in the darkness. And as the light shines, it spreads healing and it restores justice in the world. Justice meaning completeness or wholeness. The word is a witness, this word that came to John the baptizer that announces the word coming into the world, the light coming into the world. John the baptizer is the paradigm or the, of the Hebrew prophets. He spoke the word of God that came to him, but he was only a witness. Jesus Christ coming into the world is the word of God made flesh. Justin Martyr said literally, in his mind, literally, the Hebrew scriptures had taken on flesh in the person of Jesus Christ. There is a word that has come into the world and has given us the opportunity, it says, to be, for adoption or recreation to be the children of God, becoming who we were created to be, that Paul would write in Romans 8, that the world groans, waiting for the revealing of the children of God, like a woman in childbirth. And to those who believe, 
who receive them will be gave the right to become children of God. Children, children of God who are children that the world didn't choose, that the God chose. And to those who believe would mount up with wings like eagles, like it said in Isaiah 40. And we get to behold the glory of Jesus Christ. The Word became flesh. We get to see it in the Eucharist as Creator and creation come into perfect harmony as the body and blood of Christ are revealed in the wine and the bread. And the light shines in the midst of the difficulties that we face and gives us hope, even as we continue to face the tough things around us. The glory of His grace upon grace has been made known by the second act of creation in the Word becoming flesh. We rejoice and we proclaim and practice this gospel, which has created the world and now fills the whole world. The Word became flesh, and it continues, the Word continues to go out into the whole world to recreate and heal the world by bringing grace. It's a good world, and we seek to join Creator as creation continues to be remade and transformed, a transformation that includes us to be who we were created to be. In conclusion, the third question of the gospel-based discipleship asks, what is the gospel or Jesus telling you to do? The word makes a claim on our lives. The word is recreating and recreating the world. The question goes out to you today. Who are you going to be because of the word that has gone out into all creation? What are you going to do? Let us pray. Creator, we give you thanks for all you are and all you bring to us for our visit within your creation. And Jesus, in Jesus, you place the gospel in the center of this sacred circle through which all creation is related. You show us the way to live a generous and compassionate life. Give us your strength to live together with respect and commitment as we grow in your spirit, for you are God, now and forever. Amen. Our hymn is, Nearer My God to Thee.
May we pray. Creator and Redeemer, as we approach you in prayer, make us walk in beauty and balance. Make us open our hearts and minds. Make us speak the truth. We pray first for your community, the Church, the Body of Christ. We pray for all of our relatives in the circle of life throughout all creation, for those chosen to be our leaders and teachers. In peace we pray to you, Lord God. We respond to, and together we ask that it, with, teach us and show us the way. Teach us and show us the way. We call upon the earth, our mother and home, with its beautiful depths, soaring heights, and deep waters, its vitalities and abundance of life, and together we ask that it teach us and show us the way. We call upon the mountains and tundra, the high green valleys and prairies filled with wild flowers, the snows, the summits of intense silence, and we ask that they teach us and show us the way. We call upon the land which grows our food, the nourishing soil, the fertile fields, the abundant gardens and orchards, and we ask that they teach us and show us the way. We call upon the forests, the great trees reaching strongly to the sky with earth in their roots and the heavens in their branches, the fir and pine, the cedar and maple, and we ask them to teach us and show us the way. We call upon the creatures of the fields and forests and waters, our brothers and sisters, the wolves and deer, the eagles and bears, the great whales and the fish. We ask them to teach us and show us the way. We call upon all those who have lived on this earth, our ancestors and our friends, who dream the best future for generations, and upon whose lives our lives are built. And with thanksgiving, we call upon them to teach us and show us the way. Creator, you made the world and declared it to be good. The beauty of the trees, the softness of the air, the fragrance of the grass speaks to us. The summits of the mountains, the thunder of the sky, the rhythm of the water speak to us. The faintness of the stars, the freshness of the morning, the dewdrops of the flower speak to us. Above all, our hearts soar, for you speak to us in Jesus Christ, who, in whose name we offer these prayers. Amen. The Reverend Thelma Hill, The Lord's Prayer in Somalia we know where them get them la haga. The short action world get them la haga. The court still la halita. The the Gilom to the dent come spite. Spite had ark, yea, the lamot who met her neighbor were am. With no na well that we hoist. Tis not at getting. Tis no where we hoist and up near them were who is a bad. Near them well. Amen. Thank you for joining us for our worship today, and thank you to the Reverend Dr. Ray Aldred for his inspired message and for all who brought our service together this day. From the east side of the diocese. Notsi mezi nezuatehe nahe ta mezachu edine nuzuchu hotie gozita kondi nide. The blessing of the Lord God Almighty, the Father the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you this day and indeed forevermore. Amen. Our closing hymn is Amazing Grace. <laughs>